so in the first video, we got our environment built, baked it down to a single mesh, exported it to Maya. In the second part, we imported it into Maya. We got all the materials set up and got our uh, viewport set up. And now we're going to bake the texture with mental ray. So when I opened up the render view and I click render the current frame, I can see that it's rendering with Maya software and I don't have a choice for mental ray. So I'm going to go to my window and settings and preferences, preferences, and select the rendering section. And I want a preferred renderer to be a mental ray, but it's not in the list. So I'm going to go to window and I'm going to go to settings and preferences plugin manager. And on the plugin manager, if I scroll down a little ways, we're going to come to this Autodesk mental ray from Maya 2015 plugin. And it says Maya to MR and I'm going to say loaded. And I could also set auto load. And now that is going to, of course, load the mental ray renderer. And I should be able to select that from here. But I'm guessing that I got to reopen that settings or preferences window, go back to rendering. And now, yes, the preferred renderer is set the mental ray. And these options are fine. So I'm going to click save. Now I could go to my render view, which again, you could access from rendering editors render view. And I'm going to say render current frame. And I'd still set to Maya. So let me get that over to mental ray. And now we're going to render again. And this time it's going to render with mental ray. Okay, now we need to set up the render settings. Um, I'm going to select that here. And we could also get that from window rendering editors and go to render settings. So here we are with the render settings and these are the global render settings and we're going to have override these a little bit later with a texture bake set. But first we need to set up um, the, the settings here in the render settings and it's good to go ahead and load a preset default settings just to make sure that we're on the same page and everything is um, everything's the same. Go ahead and load your default settings and I'm going to see my pre uh, render using is mental ray and I'm on the common tab. I like to switch my image to on TIFF on compressed and then I'm going to uh, camera perspective is fine. You can set your alpha channel and we're going to have a custom preset. I'm going to set this to 512 by 512. And under render options, turning off, enable default light. And that should be fine for the common tab. And we're in the passes tab. We can leave it as is. And the feature, we could turn on some features here. Now, on the final bake, we're going to be doing global illumination, final gather, and ambient occlusion. But right now, I'm going to turn off ambient occlusion and final gather. Just do global occlusion. And under quality, it's set to 0.25. Um, we're going to want to turn this up later and under indirect lighting, these are the, it's the same options that features turn on. We could see that global illumination is here and we can configure it. And if I toggle that off, you'll notice that the check mark here went away and same goes for the final gather and the ambient occlusion. None of those are turned on. However, if I go to the features tab, I do global illumination, final gather, ambient occlusion. All three of those are checked on now here in the indirect lighting tab. So I want to skip ambient occlusion and final gather for now and just do a global illumination bake. I'm going to turn the accuracy down to about um, 200. 100 is probably fine for just these quick test bakes. And quality is a 0.25, so it's going to be a really fast bake. And I'm going to hit close. And now I'm going to click render the current frame. We should get a 512 by 512 image. And that's what it looks like. So I like the lighting here in Maya. I'm not an expert at lighting in Maya, but I think it looks really good to have some, uh, air, some area lights. So I'm going to select an area light and go to the outliner. And I want the area light to be facing down. So I'm going to rotate it 270 degrees. And then put it onto the ceiling or near the ceiling. And have it over here at uh, 
the position of my light. Okay, so I got an area light pointing down. Let me go ahead and check what my render looks like there. And there you can see the lighting looks a lot nicer now and it's it's obviously too bright so um, we can turn that down on the area light I'm gonna go to the attribute editor and we could turn the the color down a ways or and or the intensity to get a bit of a different uh, result and then I'm just re-rendering the uh, re-rendering the image each time till I see till I see something that looks pretty good I think that's okay so now that that's done I'm gonna duplicate that area light and just move it over on this side of the room I won't do all four corners just so that the bake time is nice and quick as we go through the tutorial and let me go ahead and do another render here and see what our room looks like. All right, it's looking a lot nicer now. And I think that's going to be good enough. This isn't a tutorial on lighting in Maya. So we're going to say that we've done setting up our lighting. And there's going to be some um, attributes that we come to later on the lights, uh, especially on the shadows under the shadow rays. Because um, that's going to get rid of some of the speckles uh, in the shadows. But the rendering time is going to go up quite significantly when we increase shadow rays. Um, so I'm not going to do it at the beginning. We've got four point lights, two area lights, and when I do a render on a current frame, it looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is kind of go around the scene and make sure that all the areas um, look nice, come up close on the lamp, and do a, uh, do a render right there. Make sure that, basically just go around the scene Make sure the lighting looks nice everywhere you go. And I want to put a point light down by that lamp. So um, I guess I'll duplicate this point light right here and move it down into the lamp. And hit render again to see how that looks. All right, that looks, should let's say that looks fine of course you're gonna take probably some uh, quite a bit of time going around your scene and making sure everything is looking pretty nice okay now if you're having problems with um, plants or, or models that are using transparency what you might have to do is open up the uh, rendering editor hypershade and then, for example, this plant is using the uh, Lambert 28. I could see the plant here in this. And what what I had to do was um, open up the the image with Photoshop. And even though I can see the transparency there, I had to go ahead and save as a TIFF. And I said none on the image compression. Save transparency and RLE on the uh, layer compression, hit OK. And that exported the TIFF. And then here back in Maya, I go to the color and select here. And I select the TIFF file, not the PNG didn't work, the PSD didn't work, but the TIFF file with the exported uh, transparency, that actually did work. And I could see now that it looks, the plant looks correct. So. Um, now in this view I'm gonna go ahead and press render and I can see the plant looks better so I've gone going around the scene and making sure all the areas of my scene are looking correct and the li lighting is good and once it is I'm ready to move on with the bake so let's go ahead and uh, get the bake set up now what I need to do is I'm going to need to select the geometry that I want to bake the texture to. And with that, I'm going to go to the rendering um, tool set and I'm going to go to the lighting and shading window. And I'm going to say assign new bake set texture bake set. And that's going to assign a new texture bake set. And if we expand it, we're going to see that that mesh right here, room shape, is listed down 
as the only uh, mesh, as the mesh that's assigned to this texture bake set. So here on the texture bake set, we could just call it room texture bake. And the first option at the top is color mode. Now I want this to be set to light and color. And normal direction is surface front. And we want to turn on orthogonal reflection. And this is the file name prefix. So I'm just going to copy it from up here, paste it down here. It's called room texture bake. That's going to be the name of my file. I'm going to increase, increase this to 1024 by 1024 and keep it at a TIFF. We could change the bits per channel, but eight's okay. And I, we could turn the number of samples up for our final bake. But when we're testing, I'm going to keep it at one. And I'm going to say bake to one map. We want to bake into one texture file. And if we need the alpha, go ahead and click on that. Um, I'm going to leave it off for now, but we're probably going to need to bake the alpha to get our uh, plant looking correct. And final gather quality is set to one again. This is something that we might turn up later for our final bake, but we're going to leave it there as is. And then the UV range zero to one is good. The only option that we want to set here is override the meshes UV set assignments. And I'm going to explain why really quick. Let's select the room shape and we're going to go into window and go to UV texture editor. We could see the UV for the whole entire scene and it's a big, big old mess. But the light map is on the second UV map. So if we click on UV sets, so we go to the, we can see there's two UV sets. The first one, which is map one, which is the, the texture for all of the, um, the UV map for all the items that are in the scene, including the walls and the couch and all the props. They're all mapped here in their zero to one UV range using different textures. And we know, and then they use the different uh, texture here. Um, so basically it's assigning 25 textures are assigned uh, into this one zero to one UV space. And because we have 25 different textures, there's gonna be 25 different textures back here. And then they're gonna be applied to the right object and mapped to the right UV space. Well, for the light map, we need a second UV set, and that's what this light map UV set is. And I can see that it could have got optimized better, but this that's okay. We'll, we'll work with this for now. We'll see that we have a second UV set called the light map with a lowercase l, and that is what we wanna do the texture bake to. So I'm gonna go back to the texture bake, and I'm gonna say override meshes UV set assignment, and we want to put this onto that second UV set called light map where the, where the light map UVs are at. And uh, under options, that's fine. Mint array, we can, that's fine. And the, we want to also set fill texture seams, and we're going to set that to three. Fill texture seams is going to make it so that we don't, hopefully don't get black borders around the edges of our models. So we've set all of these settings up and we're ready to test a bake out. Um, so we have this settings here. In addition, we've already gone through all of our render settings. So we know that the bake that we're gonna do is going to just be a global illumination. There won't be a final gather or an ambient occlusion, uh, but that's okay because we're just testing it out to see how it looks. So with my room texture bake selected, I'm gonna go to lighting and shading and select batch bake mint array, but we want to go to the options. Now here in the objects to bake, we want to do selected because we just don't have our room selected. We want to bake to a texture and bake optimization is an important choice because depending on which one you choose here, it could take a significant amount of time, uh, time difference. Um, so you could try different ones, but the best one to do here is going to be multiple objects um, and we want to bake shadows and so with that set I'm going to click convert now this is going to go through and actually bake the texture and you can see it did it pretty quickly uh, because we all of our settings are turned down pretty low now the texture goes to whatever your current project is that you've set via set project um, so I could say recent projects and I could see my most default one is this is uh, is Maya slash project slash default. So you need to go to that folder 
Here's the default folder. And inside of there, you're gonna have a render data folder called Mint Array, and this is a light map. So you can see that here's my uh, one that was baked just a minute ago. And if I open this up, you can see here is my t um, actual light map bake file now when you do that Maya automatically assigns it to the to the object but you need to relink it so go to window relationship editor UV linking and select texture centric or UV centric and on here select something like the texture and then select the light map that's gonna put everything on the light map and now we could see um, that the light map has been applied and we can go around the scene and make sure that all of the uh, light looks good, except, you know, the shadows and the quality is really poor right now. So I think this looks good and I'm ready to bake my final bake. Now, each time I do this, I'm going to want to, after I look at it, I want to want to do control Z to undo back before the bake was done so that my... Uh, all my default materials go back onto my objects and I'm ready to make another render. And it's okay to control Z that part because our texture is still saved out in this file. Okay, so we have our basic uh, bake completed. It doesn't look very good because we didn't turn up any of our settings, but at least we know that all of the lights are settings are correct. All the objects are in the right place. Everything's in the in everything set up. We have our texture bake set configured. Now it's just a matter of turning up all of the settings and getting a really nice looking bake. So we're going to do that in the final part. Remember to like, subscribe if this helped you out, and I'll see you guys in the final part of this series.